Um, yeah, so they're holed up, and some people find that boring because the film decides to take a break and build some character. Well, boring. <laughs> I like that. I like that little bit. I like that bit in the cellar, in the wine cellar. And, uh, and then some people were complaining about the fact that most of the party goers get killed off and like it turned into giant wasps or wasps break out of their bodies. And I'm like, why? They're complaining about four survivors. What do you want everybody to survive? I don't, I don't understand. I don't get that. I don't. One guy was complaining. There wasn't any tits. I'm serious. These are criticisms I see about this movie. It didn't have any titties, so thumbs down. Really? I mean, fuck. I like seeing tits as much as the nice as as, as much as the next guy, but come on. Just because a movie doesn't show me tits, doesn't mean it's bad. Fuck. Movie needs more tits. <laughs> come on. Oh shit! But anyway, it's not even that long of a scene. The scene in the cellar—it's a—it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty short sequence. Then things pick up again. Our lead goes in and has to go find the keys for the car. And a nice little bit suspenseful sequence. You find out that, well, our uh, uh, Clifton Collins Jr. Sydney guy is not feeling too well. And instead of it being a typical, okay, he just turns into another giant wasp. No, a little tiny wasp breaks out of his shoulder. And starts basically manipulating him and controlling him. So it's kind of interesting. Oh, okay. All right. That's that's kind of interesting. And then you know, of course, Lance, it's a it's a Lance Henderson. Lance Henderson dies. I'm just gonna say it. He dies, but he dies a heroic death and blows up a bug with him. So I'm okay with it because at least he died a heroic death, and he dies like about close to an hour into the movie. So it's not like he dies like first thing. So he has a good amount of a, a screen time, and he has some nice moments uh, where he can actually show his acting talents, and he, he gets to tell the bug to kiss his ass, you know, and boom. And all right, okay, all right. So then you're pretty much left with our two leads, um, now, you know, with um, Paul and Julia, who I think the performances of Matt O'Leary and Jessica Cook, I thought was pretty good. And they had good chemistry with one another. And they were likable characters. So I cared about what happened to them. And so then it's them against all the bugs. And uh, there's uh, some nice bits and moments where they face off with the bugs. And I, I really like the production design in this movie. Because they, what they do is they show that the giant wasps have started to build a nest in the house. So they start having like their, you know, like the, the what like wasps do. Like their... Uh, the material you know that they use to create their nests and so they're creating a nest in, in, in the house and the production design and the art direction is actually really good looks like something out of a video game and what happens is they kind of make a break for it they're trying to get away and well one of the wasps shows up and it's a pretty bad CGI effect uh, that's where you get the Beast Wars effects and it shows up and stabs our lead and uh, the girl fights off the the bug, ends up, but she gets knocked basically across, in, you know, into the forest somewhere. And I'm like, please don't die. And that's not what happens, thank God. And our lead guy Paul is now he's captured in the nest, and uh, Sydney is there, and he's being controlled by the queen wasp, and pretty much the queen wasp is trying to get him to take a, a grub from her, you know, from her uh, wasp snatch and shove it into our lead's mouth so he can become the new whatever king or whatever. And king wasp. And it was practical grub. It looked really good. And uh, pretty much what our lead does is try to convince Sydney to not, to not give in to the, the wasps, you know, this is not your mother, Sydney. And uh, don't listen to it. And then the girl comes back like a badass with a fucking uh, sawzall. Just fucking goes right through Sydney, cuts him in half. And then goes after the bug and they grab the grub and then they run away. And then they end up using this flame paste that was used in the party earlier. 
and uh, she cuts the gas line, and they drive off, and she throws the, the flame paste, and then boom! The whole house blows up with the bugs and everything. CGI, but CGI explosion, but, you know, I can deal with it. They drive away. And this is where the film should have ended. This is kind of where the film... I think the film should have ended here. Because then you have, like, a flaming bug that shows up, and it looks like shit. It's terrible CGI. And it lands on the truck, and then they try... Then they end up crashing their truck into a tree to kill the bug. And then... Our lead wakes up, and he's been through hell. And I think the guy, I think the film did a great job showing that this guy was an everyman. It was nice to see. You know, he's an everyman. He's not Rambo. I don't get this criticism that he started out as some man child and then became a badass. That's not what happens. He's, he's, he gets stabbed. He gets stung in the fucking shoulder. He, he, he's captured. He gets saved by the girl. Um, the only stuff he does is defend himself, like anybody would, in a normal way. He almost gets killed by this bug that comes out of, of, of a dog, and by this wasp that comes out of a dog, and he stabs it to death with an ice pick. But it's nothing that's super amazingly badass. There's nothing that he does that's really not something that anyone can do. So I don't understand that criticism at all. And so... He then, you know, he's, he's like, literally, he's been through it. His knee's fucked up because he tripped earlier before the bugs even showed up. You know, he's, he's got, he's, 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 he's got a gaping hole in his shoulder. He's bleeding profusely. And, you know, and now he's waking up, survived the car crash. A little bit of drama where, you know, the girl might not be alive, but he wakes, she wakes up. The ambulance comes and they start making out of the ambulance. And this is another criticism I saw people have. They call, like, they were fine with the giant wasps that come out of people. That was fine. But the moment they started making out in an ambulance, that's too far. The movie's gone too far. Bullshit. Like, really? That's the moment where you're like, Oh, fuck this movie. They're making out in front of a paramedic and an ambulance. This isn't realistic. No shit. It's a movie about giant fucking wasps. Giant mutant wasps. And you're like, oh, they made out in the ambulance. That's too much. Come on. These, like, See what I mean by these criticisms are asinine and stupid? The movie's bad because they make out in an ambulance. The movie's bad because it's God, they don't show any tits. It doesn't show any tits. The movie's bad because the main lead character is kind of a man-child, but then he becomes a badass, which never happens. The movie's bad because it has cliches. God forbid it has any... It's somewhat familiar, considering it's a genre that's had thousands, if not millions, of movies made. See, that's the thing. I, I don't... If you don't like it, that's fine. If you find it boring, it's not your cup of tea, that's fine. That's one thing. But these other criticisms, kind of stupid. But that's just my opinion. I'm throwing it out there. I'm defending the movie. Nobody else seems to want to. So I'll be the guy. I'll defend Stone. It's one of the be better uh, creature feature, big bug, low budget, independent films I've seen in years. I mean, I, it really is. And I don't like it being compared to an Asylum film or people saying it's the worst movie ever. I'm like, really? You need to watch some really shitty horror films. <laughs> some honestly shitty horror films. Like, true shitty horror films. Like, fucking Curse of the Blue Lights, Crash, Blood Voyage, Demon Warrior, Feeders, Feeders 2, and Star Crystal, and then come back to me and say that this is what the worst movie ever made. But, you know, it's all personal taste. I know. I know. It's all that. But it just, it bugs me. It bugs me. It bugs me to see people just tear this movie to shreds. Because it's, it has more, I have more fun with this than I had with any big budget creature feature. Probably since maybe Men in Black. I did like Eight-Legged Freaks, so it's probably the last big budget mainstream creature feature. That I, I had fun with since Eight-Legged Freaks. 
This is not a film meant to be taken seriously. Its concept is absurd. But it's they do they do a lot of fun stuff with it. You have these giant big wa mutant wasps. A lot of it's done practically. There's good bits of gore. The characters are likable. We have a line of dialogue where somebody says, "Holy motherfucker!" You know, I mean, there's some fun stuff like that. I mean, this is my type of movie. But I guess that's the thing. I I, I want to defend this movie because this is a type of film that I personally enjoy. But you know. I think that these type of movies are cool and these type of movies are awesome. I think more we should have more movies like this, but you know, that's just me personally. But there's one problem I definitely do have is the ending because they're making out I I don't have any problem with them making out the ambulance because after all this shit that they've been through, they deserve a make out session. Uh what I do have a problem with is the sequel bait ending. It's stupid. What it is, it's like what happens is the f fucking giant mutant cow wasps complete with cowbells and like cow skin prints on their thorax and they fly away I'm like great so it's not that so so after all the shit they went through they're gonna go through even more and we're gonna set up a sequel that's ever gonna happen great I, uh. I mean, it's just the way that the sequel bait ending was. Like, if it just showed them drive away and they're they're it's been proven that they're safe now, and then the bugs fly into the air and the giant cow wasps fly in the air, okay. But directly after they've been through all this shit, they almost died, and now we're gonna have more, like even bigger wasps. That's just kind of like overkill. But really, that's that's one of the biggest problems I have with the film. It's just the sequel bait ending. Other than that, you know, there's a little, the score is inconsistently good. I think there's a little bit too much of a piano score that's slowed down. That just doesn't seem to fit the film for me. Um, but you know, there's other stuff I I, I definitely did like. I, I other bits of the score I liked, but for the most part, it's inconsistent. Uh, but I thought the directing was good, the cinematography was fine, the editing was good, uh, the performances for the most part I thought were actually pretty good by the actors. Uh. I like the script. I like the story. I mean, there's even like fun little nods to uh, to other horror films. Like I swear to God, I don't know if it's just me or I, I I think it was on purpose when they show the human the growth hormone or whatever stuff that uh, Sydney was using to create his concoction. They they show the cans of it and it says trioxin on it. So I was like, <laughs> trioxin. It's the same name of the chemical you know that's used to create the zombies in Return of the Living Dead. So I thought that was a nice little touch. You could tell that the, the director and the writers were people who had a passion for this type of film. They had a passion for the 80s type of horror film. And it definitely did show. And, and I thought it really did. I thought the film was an entertaining, fun movie. And uh, that's, what it t that's what it wanted to be. It wasn't trying to be something 100% original because it knew it couldn't be. That there, there's no way, in my opinion, that we can really have films like that anymore, especially in this genre. Would it be nice? Sure, but it's not going to happen. It's not happening. So I'm not going to sit here and wait for it and expect it and criticize a film because it doesn't, it isn't, isn't one of those movies. Because, fuck's sake, that's not possible. I can't even, I can't even fathom that even remotely even happening, especially in this type of film. So I'm glad that the, the filmmakers just said, we're just going to make an entertaining, fun movie. We're going to make a fun B-movie with, you know, some cool uh, practical wasp effects, some good bits of gore, some likable characters, and we're just going to, you know, create a fun ride. And that's what it was. It was a fun ride. It was entertaining. It was fun to watch. It had some good gore, uh, likable characters. You know, it was, it was some shitty CGI, but that's pretty. That's all the problems I have with it. Shitty CGI at times, a uh, mass score, and you know, just a, a really lame sequel made ending. But other than that, I I really like the movie. It was, I definitely would put this on my best of list. So what I really want to say about Stung, except if it was rated out of five stars, I would give the movie four and a half. I liked it that much. There's only like a little few problems I had with it. I'd probably say I liked it more than Deathgasm, and I liked it probably as much as Cooties, which is another film I really enjoyed. And I definitely liked this more than The Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse, but I still like that movie. 
uh, but yeah, I, I would say this is an underrated gem. I'd say this is an underrated overlooked gem from last year that I do recommend you check out. If you like films like Arachnophobia, The Nest, uh, Ticks, if you like those type of big bug movies, I definitely uh, recommend you give Stung a watch sometime. By the way, thank you for watching my review of Stung, uh, and I will see you guys later. See ya.